What's going on everybody? King of Dragons 5000 here coming at you with another figure review. Today we'll be having a look at the Mattel WWE Elite Collection WrestleMania Heritage The Undertaker. That's right, I finally found the WrestleMania Heritage line at my local retail. Undertaker does include the hat and trench coat. Here we have a nice picture of The Undertaker back in the day. He is wearing his trench coat and hat and we'll go more on that in the review. I'll also go on to something that I don't like about the figure, but like I said, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Nice picture of the Undertaker on the side. On the back, no real read-up, just Undertaker, and this is his ring attire from WrestleMania 7. Career highlights, World Heavyweight Champion and WWE Champion hails from Death Valley. Signature moves, the Tombstone, Chokeslam, and the Last Ride, although he didn't start using the Last Ride till his American Badass phase, but... More on, we're not going to worry about that. Here's his emblem, of course. Weight and height are wrong. I think at this time Undertaker was billed at 7 feet or 6'11". I might be wrong, but he did not weigh 212 at the time. Recreate the action of the WWE. Other figures in this line for the WrestleMania heritage include Kane. So I'm really happy I have Undertaker. What I'm going to do now is take a little break get him open up, and we'll continue on with his review, so sit tight everyone. So here we have the Undertaker pose and out of the packaging, now before we get on to his accessories, let's get a good 360 of him. He is wearing his classic jacket and his hat, which is a really nice touch. They are his only two accessories, he is wearing them at the moment. Right off the bat, I'm going to say yes, the hat is a little bit oversized, but that's because he needs to actually wear it. It's kind of big, but I guess from some angles you can see you, from that angle it looks absolutely huge on him, but like that it's okay. It just depends on the angle you see it at. And then he, moving the hat off, he also does come with this jacket. It is a soft rubbery plastic, but it... It's not too pliable. I mean, you can get his arms out to about that far. Bring him in. I uh, can't really bend his arms because the coat will just send him back down. But like I said, you get a, you at least get some outward arm movement with it. His arms go out to about that far. Getting it off is not the easiest of tasks. What you have to do is kind of like get it over his shoulders like this. Or I'll try to anyway. And then like try peeling it back like a book. And you have to also move one arm back as you can see. And you gotta try to slide it off his arm. Let's see if I can't do this on camera. I said you have to peel it like a book, slide it off one arm first, then slide it off the other arm. And moving Undertaker off to the side. And here we have his coat. Now there are some details on it, like all the stitching, all the stitched work and stuff like that, but no paint, it's just really black. And there's really not much to say about that. And it's made of a softer plastic than the hat, so I'm kind of glad about that. But that's all his coat is. There's... A, a, some detail in the sleeves, really nice. It does have the collar to it. So that's his coat for you. And here we have the Undertaker himself. Let's get a good 360 of him without his coat on. And if you notice, he is missing his tie. Something Undertaker wore at this time when he came to the ring was a tie. And... For some reason, Mattel did not give us a tie. They did with the uh, Elite 23 Undertaker, where he had the purple spats and the purple gloves, as well as the hat, the coat, and the mask. But this Undertaker is surprisingly lacking a tie, and that's kind of odd to me. I really would have liked the tie, but, you know, it's, it's no big deal, I guess, if you want a complete Undertaker. But here, here we have him out of the packaging, and out of his coat, I should say. And you can see this, he does have 
a, a few parts reused from his previous Elite 23 release. Uh, the upper torso is a reissue from his 28 release, and then he has a regular uh, 23 release. Regular Undertaker legs, so that's nothing new. He also is sporting the gray spats, so that's really cool. Uh, he didn't have buttons on the gray spats, so that's actually accurate that there's no buttons on either side of him. Historical accuracy says Undertaker's gloves are wrong. They were darker than these in his match with Superfly Snooker, but like I said, it's no big deal. You know, I'm not like gonna nitpick the figure for historical inaccuracies and like diss the figure. That's that's wrong, but it would have been nice if the gloves were darker, but I'm not gonna complain and say that that's a make or break decision. And while we're at it, let's take a look at the face. That is a really nice Undertaker face there. As you can see, you can see the makeup that he used. He, he really wore a lot of makeup back in this time to make him look zombified. And then the coat. The sleeves are, of course, a soft rubber, so they don't hinder his articulation at all. And then, like I said, nothing special about his lower torso. It's the same that we've seen on every single Undertaker to date, except the American Badass Undertaker. Okay, let's move the, zoom in just a little bit so we can run down his articulation. Undertaker has the standard elite articulation, which is a ball joint head, which he can look up surprisingly well. Can't look down all that well, which is a little disappointing because you kind of want him looking down, not up. Uh, head moves side to side, bobbles. No, his hair, his mullet doesn't get in the way, and he is rocking the mullet fabulously, as well as the his goatee, his chops. Arms on a ball joint, they go out, do a full 360. Like I said, not at all hindered by his sleeves. He spins at the bicep, single jointed in the elbow. He spins and bends at the wrist. He has the ab crunch, which we all love so much. Nice tight weight swivel. Let's go forward, back, and out. A little stiff going out. He spins at the thigh. Double jointed in the knee. That's one joint. That's two. He spins at the boot. Has some slight pivot and stiff ankles. Let's see what can. He has ankle joints. It's just really stiff, but they are there. So really nice figure, really good articulation. What I'm going to do now is get him posed up and move on to my final thoughts. Then we'll wrap up this review. So sit tight, everyone. And so here we have Undertaker posed for my final thoughts. And overall, I really do enjoy this figure a lot. And let's actually try to get him standing up upright. It's all in his ankles. He doesn't want to stand up straight. But anyway, I really do enjoy this figure. I picked mine up at Kmart for $21.99. That is quite a bit to pay for an Elite figure. However, that's what we'll be paying from now on. Prices are going up and all that good stuff. But if you can find them, I definitely recommend them if you are a fan of The Undertaker or you're collecting Elite figures because he is a must-have in your collection. I really do enjoy this WrestleMania Heritage line they started last year. Uh, you can go check out my reviews of HBK and Bret Hart, but like I said, I really do enjoy these figures. The WrestleMania Heritage line is something that I feel was long overdue. If you can find this Undertaker, pick him up. You will not be disappointed with him unless you're like nitpicky and like going to bash the figure because he's not wearing a tie or improper gloves. But like I said, with all that aside, he is still a really nice figure, and they do have a tie for him if you're willing to look for it. I say go pick up this figure, do it when you see him on the spot, and this is King of Dragons 5000 saying happy hunting, and I'll see you guys later. Take care, everyone. <laughs> I'm